What's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be putting together an awesome little small form factor gaming machine using a relatively new GPU that's hit the market. It's actually turned out to be one of my favorite little small form factor GPUs and it's known as the RX 6400. I've done a couple videos so far with this graphics card and I've become a huge fan of it. I know that a lot of people out there are kind of brushing it off because it is a lower end card, but for small form factor builds and 1080p gaming, I think it's a great choice. And when it comes down to it, at least at the time of making this video, the low profile single slot RX 6400 is going for around $160. And when we take a look at the low profile GTX 1650s, which is actually a dual slot card because of the heatsink, they're around 300, and this does offer very similar performance. Actually, in some games and most synthetic benchmarks, the RX 6400 comes out ahead. So let's jump right into the build, and obviously we wanted to keep this as small as possible, so I opted for a really small case. This is actually not meant to be a gaming case. It's from a company called Goodysari, and it's known as the SR01. If we take a look around back here, it does have a single slot for a PCIe card. Now this could be a single slot graphics card like we have here with the RX 6400, but the way it's set up, we do need a riser cable. So it's meant for a mini ITX board, so obviously we need to use a mini ITX motherboard. And uh, yeah, I'm going to actually make all of this fit. It does come with a little bracket here, so you can mount two 2.5 inch drives, or a single 3.5 inch drive, but we're just going to be using an M.2 SSD for this build to keep everything nice and small. And to power this unit, since we don't have much room for a big power supply, I opted for a 300 watt Pico power supply. I've used this in a previous build, actually on the same case, but it was in the black version. We went with a water-cooled 5700G, and this runs on 12 volts, so we do need a brick. This is a 240 watt brick. The CPU is rated at 65 watt. It'll pull up to around 100 under extreme load, and the RX 6400 is rated at 52 watts, but it only really pegs out around 38. So we've got plenty of wattage here, and I could actually get away with a smaller power supply. For the motherboard, I went with an ASRock Mini ITX B550. Nothing super special here. It's not a great overclocker, but it does work out really well for these small form factor builds. And it's a lot cheaper than some of the other B550 Mini ITX boards. When it comes to RAM, I went with 16 gigabytes of Corsair's Vengeance RGB. This is running at 3600 megahertz. I don't need anything super fast here with the 5600X because we're gonna be adding a dedicated GPU. If I was using something like the 5700G with internal graphics, I would go with faster RAM. For the cooler, I just opted to use the stock Wraith Stealth cooler that comes with that Ryzen 5 5600X. It'll cool it off really nicely, I've measured everything out, and it will fit. I've already mentioned it, but for the GPU, we went with the RX 6400 because it's low profile, single slot, and we can make it fit inside of this super small form factor case. We've got 4 gigabytes of GDDR6. It's only running at a 64-bit bus, but you know, I've already done some videos on it. I like this card. It does great at 1080p. Now, since this case is a little funky, we did need a riser cable, and the RX 6400 is a PCIe 4.0 card. It'll work in a 2.0 or a 3.0 slot, but since the 5600X and the motherboard I'm using for this build supports 4.0, I figured I'd just go with a 4.0 riser. Pick this up on Amazon, and all of these parts will be listed in the description. All right, so let's move on to the build. So first things first, I want to get this case situated with the power supply. We've got this 300 watt Pico power supply. And to mount this inside of the metal case, I'm going to be using these plastic standoffs. You can get a pack of these plastic standoffs, all different sizes on Amazon. They come in really handy for all kinds of projects. So I need to kind of figure out exactly where I'm going to mount this power supply. I'm going to put the motherboard in here and just get everything lined up to see exactly where I'm going to mount it and just make sure I have enough room for the cables to reach. So I've come up with a spot here, and I may need to move this around just a little bit once I get the motherboard mounted in, but it's easy enough to do. And I really like this case because we've got that mesh, and it just allows us to kind of mount these things anywhere. Okay, I just went ahead and snapped in my I.O. plate for the motherboard. And once we get this mini ITX board inside of here, there's actually quite a bit of room. It's still a very small form factor case but it's a little tall when you compare it to others, and that will give us the room to add that GPU up top. And this BIOS battery keeps coming off. I need to get some more double-sided sticky tape for this. And it does look like I will have to move my power supply just a little bit, but overall, yeah, that looks like where it's gonna sit. I might just actually flip it around. As soon as I do that, I can secure the motherboard down and plug everything in. But yeah, it actually turned out really nice. I had to move the power supply down just a little bit, but we've got plenty of holes to line everything up with. I can clean up the cabling a little more if I need to. And we have our power in. 
So like I showed you, this does take 12 volts in. We've got that 240 watt brick to power the whole unit up. So now it's time to get the GPU installed. And to tell you the truth, with a little bit of modification, I could probably just make it fit in here like this if I did some cut into the case. But I want it to sit in here a little differently than normal, so I went with that riser cable. And this is about the best one I could find. That was 4.0. It's got a 90 degree on one end. So we're going to go ahead and plug this into the motherboard. And we've got plenty of flex with it. I wish it was a bit shorter, but uh, I think we can definitely make this work. Actually, no, we'll have to bend it. Yeah, we'll go this way with it. Again, I'm probably going to use some of those plastic standoffs to mount this up. Like I mentioned, they come in really handy. But yeah, I should be able to make everything line right up with that slot on the rear. Alright, so the RX 6400 is going to sit right here. We're not going to be blocking any airflow to that CPU cooler. But since I'm using the stock Wraith Stealth, I can actually remove the little ring around it. And I think that's what I'm going to do here because it seems to be just a little bit too tall. Those rings come right off pretty easily, and it is now the perfect height. So as soon as this is mounted in here, there's like a millimeter gap between the plastic on that CPU cooler and the bottom of the GPU. We're still not going to be blocking any airflow at all for the cooler itself. And just to make sure this GPU doesn't wobble around in here on the riser, I've just mounted it up right there on the side of the case. And this is how it came out. I think it went together really nicely. I love seeing that little GPU on the side here. I think it looks really cool. This case does come with rubber feet. You can mount it horizontally or vertically, so it's really up to you. What I'm going to do here for this video is just go ahead and install Windows 11 Pro. We're going to test that out. And if you're interested, let me know in the comments below. I can go ahead and install Linux on this and see how it performs with Linux gaming. Go ahead and boot it up. Now I've got the side panel off right now, but for my testing, I will put the side panel back on. I just wanted you to see everything in here. I'm not a huge fan of RGB, but having a little bit of it can go a long way. I opted for this RAM here because it was basically the same price as regular RAM with no RGB. I've been up and running for a little while now. Everything's working really well. I've installed some games, some benchmarks, and some emulators that we're going to be testing out in this video. But yeah, it's definitely a snappy little system. That 5600X is going to basically do whatever you need it to, especially in a small form factor like this. I'm going to move over to my game capture in a second just to get a better look at everything, but let's go ahead and start up Halo Infinite and see how it performs. And here it is. We're at 1080p medium settings, but I do have resolution scale set to 85%. That really does help out. We're up there in the mid 60s, low 70s, and if you locked VSync on, you could run this at 60, no problem at all. So the temp on that CPU did jump up to around 83. I mean, it's really not that bad, especially given the cooler we're using, but I think I'm going to go into the BIOS and just adjust the fan curve a little bit. I've got some more testing to do, but before we jump over there, I wanted to give you a quick look at everything. As you can see, we've got that Ryzen 5 5600X. On average, we're pulling up to around 68 watts while gaming. Not bad at all. We've got that 240 watts from the wall, so we do have plenty of power there. When it comes to the RX 6400, this is a PCIe 4.0 card, and the riser I have is a 4.0 riser. So in GPU-Z, you can see that this is running at PCI 4.0. It's only X4, that's what the card supports, but that riser is working. And if I start a render test here, we can head over to sensors, see graphics, and it does jump up to a little over 2300 megahertz. We've also got that four gigs of GDDR6 on the GPU. And like I mentioned, I'm actually a really big fan of this GPU. It works out great for 1080p gaming. Some of the higher end AAA stuff needs to be dropped down to 900p high, but at low 1080, it'll do basically everything. So the very first thing I did with this machine was run some benchmarks. Let's go ahead and take a look at those. Geekbench 5, single core, 1602, multi, 7913. I mean, the multi on this, given that we have 6 cores and 12 threads, is really close to the 5700G, and that has 8 cores and 16 threads. Taking a look at some GPU benchmarks with 3D Mark Night Raid. Total score here, 34,783. Firestrike, 10,599. And our graphics score is up in the 11,000 range. So these scores aren't looking that bad, but it's not a AAA 4K gaming machine. We can still get some good 1080p performance out of the way, so let's check out some more games and then we'll move over to emulation. 
GTA 5 at 1080p. We've got a very high, high mix here. Looks really good. Everything's been running really smooth. I know it's an older game, but this RX 6400 does work really well with GTA 5. With this one here, we got an average of 112 FPS. More than playable in my opinion. When it comes to God of War, I was really impressed, but unfortunately it just won't do 1080p high with no FSR. So what I did was I turned a couple settings to original, we've got FSR set to quality, and we're at 1080p. And just at original settings, 1080p with no FSR, we can get an average of around 64. So yeah, I mean, this is playable on the RX 6400. When it comes to Elden Ring, this definitely gives the lower end GPUs a run for its money. We can't do 60 at 1080p, basically even at low. It's really odd the way this is set up, but right now I'm at a high medium mix at 900p and we're locked at 60. But as soon as I take this up to 1080p low settings, we get an average of around 55 FPS, but just taking it down to 900p, which doesn't take a lot away from it, you can go ahead and play this all day at 60. And finally, Cyberpunk 2077. 1080p, FSR set to balanced. Believe it or not, we're actually getting an average of around 76 FPS. A few months ago, this would have been impossible on a card like this, but with all of the new updates and patches they've put out, it really does perform well. Now it's time to take a look at a little bit of emulation. First up, we have 3DS using the Citra emulator. We're at 3X and it's doing a good job. We do get some fluctuations, but it's kind of normal for this without an Intel CPU. Not bad at all. PS2 is gonna perform really well with the 5600X and the RX 6400. 4K is totally possible with a lot of games. Some higher end games, you might need to drop it down to 1440p. But either way you look at it, this combo does offer some really good PS2 performance. And for the final emulator, we've got RPCS3 for PS3 emulation. It does work out really well with this little combo. Every once in a while I've seen a graphical issue, I'm not sure if it's the newer driver for that RX 6400, but in a previous test with a higher end CPU, it will run RPCS3 at 4K, but on a machine like this, 1080 and 1440 is totally fine. So overall, I think the build turned out great. It's not a super high-end gaming machine, but for 1080p gaming and some really awesome emulation, even up to 4K, this is going to work out just fine. This whole setup offers much better GPU performance than the 5700G by itself with the iGPU, and even when we get RDNA 2 APUs, hopefully 7000 series, I don't think those are going to match the performance of the RX 6400. I think they're going to come really close, but keep in mind, this has 4 gigabytes of dedicated GDDR6. Those are going to be using shared DDR5 memory, so I don't think that AMD is going to put those out just yet, but maybe the next generation after the 7000 series APUs will outperform this, but I don't think 7000 will. But that's going to wrap it up for this one. Really appreciate you watching. Let me know in the comments below what you think about the performance on this little rig with the RX 6400. Of course, you could always spend a little more money and build a little bit of a bigger rig with something like the RTX 3060 or even an RX 6600. But I really do like the way that this turned out. And if you're interested in building something similar, links for everything I used are in the description. But that's it for this one. And like always, thanks for watching.